In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 favourite fossil finds of the year. The Yorkshire coast has been rather picked over this year, but with enough searching efforts and lots of dedication, I've managed to find 10 beautiful fossils to share with you at the end of the year. Before we dive into my top 10 fossil finds of the year, let me first share a few exceptional fossils that didn't just quite make the list, but are still really good quality ones. First up is this stunning Dactylioceros ammonite, which I found and prepared myself. It's a top quality specimen with a beautifully preserved matrix and a nice shine to the fossil. Now we're moving on to three raven scar fossils. These are really quite remarkable. First, a beautiful Gramosphorus with a lovely matrix finish. This one really stands out thanks to its clean preparation and the stunning surrounding matrix which frames the ammonite perfectly and brings out some nice detail on the shell which can be seen. Next we've got this lovely little Phyloceros ammonite which I found right at the start of the year. I carved out a decent little mouth border on this specimen. These are quite sought after ammonites and this example has that classic smooth elegant shape that makes them really popular with all the local collectors. And finally a Hildoceros ammonite. These are famously associated with Saint Hilda and the legend of ammonites being turned into snake stones. Let's go ahead and take a look at find number 10. All right, coming in at number 10 is this lovely flat gray pebble, which I found at Robin Hood's Bay. At first, there wasn't much showing, just a really small hint of an ammonite peeking out. But once I got it home and prepared it, it revealed this stunning fossil. It almost looks like a little ball with a beautiful ammonite sitting in the very center. This ammonite is called an androg and is roughly 200 million years old. If you have enjoyed this top 10 finds video, please remember to give the video a like and if you'd like to see more of my fossil finds on the Yorkshire coast in the future, hit that subscribe button. Thank you. For find number 9, I'm actually grouping together a bunch of different ammonites I picked up over the last year. These are all rare lower layer specimens from the right side of Robin Hood's Bay. These include Gagatisserus and other multi-blocks of small ammonites that are really fun to find and prepare. They're certainly not as easy to come across as the Dactylioceros species that everyone picks up. You might be lucky to find one good piece per day if you're lucky and know what you're looking for. But that's what makes searching for them so rewarding. There's a whole variety of rare species here like Astyoceros and Promiserus mixed in. They generally need to be aerobraded rather than just using traditional air pens, so prepping them is a little bit more intricate, but it's definitely worth it. I'm now building up a nice little collection of these rarer ammonites in my cabinet. If you would like to purchase your very own fossil from the Yorkshire coast, please check out my website called biofossil.com. There's a bunch of beautiful prepared fossils available for purchase. There's also unopened ammonite nodules and children's fossil boxes. Please take a look if you are interested. Thank you. Now coming in at find number eight, we have a pair of lovely little pieces of articulated crinoid. These are beautiful and quite rare fossils from the lower layers. And while you can find crinoid pieces all around Whitby at many of the different beaches, it's not actually that often you find them this well articulated. Crinoids were ancient marine animals that anchored themselves to floating pieces of wood and to prepare these pieces I used soft iron powder in my aerobrader.
For our next find I wanted to show you what it looked like when I spotted it on the beach. The back of this fossil looked quite eroded and honestly didn't seem like it would be much good at all, but once I cracked it open it revealed literally a perfect Pleuroceros ammonite. What's even more interesting about this one is that it goes right down to the very middle. Pleuroceros ammonites often don't have a very well preserved centre, but this one is pinpoint perfect all the way through. So this fossil was likely a bit of a traveller, even though it ended up at Port Mulgrave, it had likely rolled down from a middle lighthouse beach further down the coast, like staves. Perhaps all the time the nodule had spent rolling around at sea is exactly why it popped open so easily and gave us such a perfect fossil reveal. And for this next find, this one's a bit special because it's technically not one that I picked up myself, although I was there. When it was found, this gastropod was actually found by my dad at Robinus Bay. But these particular gastropods aren't originally from there. It likely travelled all the way from somewhere like Red Car Beach and ended up in the boulder clay at Robinus Bay. It must have just come out of that clay and my dad was lucky enough to spot it. I did the prep work on this one. Just a quick go over with the aerobrader using iron powder and it turned out beautifully. I've actually never found this species before myself, so I'm really glad to add it to my fossil collection. For this next find, we actually have two different sets of vertebrae. The first one I found myself has this really nice orangey patina from its time spent at sea, I presume. There are three vertebrae on one side, and then washed onto the top is another individual ichthyosaur vertebra. The second set is a really neat little pyritic string of vertebrae. My dad actually found one section of it, and then I found the joining section a day or two later, which was a really fun discovery. They actually matched up perfectly. The vertebrae are preserved on top, and then washed to the side of it are the animal's neural arches, which makes it a really interesting and unique fossil to have in my fossil collection. Finds like this always make you wonder where the rest of the animal might be. For this next find I've got something I discovered that's really special. Inside it you can see crocodile scoots the armoured plates of this ancient Jurassic sea creature. There's also a vertebra on the back, although it's not very well preserved. I think it had recently eroded away before I found it. I always love finding crocodile fossils because they're quite a bit rarer compared to ichthyosaurs. Their bony scoots acted like natural armour, giving them protection in the Jurassic Seas. For find number three, we have a much rarer upper lias ammonite, which is called a Lytoceros. I found it tucked away into a little crevice at low tide on one of the more remote beaches that I searched for fossils at. It had already popped open naturally, so I sent the rock off to get it cut based, and now we have this beautiful rare ammonite displayed perfectly on its natural stand. I've only found one other good example of this species from the upper lias, so I'm really happy to add this one to my fossil collection. For find number two, some of you may remember this from the very start of the year. I made a major discovery during an extremely low tide and found five huge ichthyosaur vertebrae washed up far out on the beach. I imagine they'd been sitting on the seabed for over a hundred years and had literally just been washed in by a really big sea. When I first found them, they still had quite a lot of rock attached, so I somehow managed to fit them into my bag and carry them back. These vertebrae themselves are actually really, really heavy and they're actually holding up my display cabinet and keeping it balanced at the moment. So I'm just going to show you them as they are. It's definitely one of my favorite finds of the year.
and for any of you regular subscribers who watched my very last video on the YouTube channel, you've probably already guessed what find number one is. It's this beautiful string of 17 articulated ichthyosaur vertebra and ribs, a section from around the animal's rib cage. There's also some really well preserved shale ammonites washed up with it, which really helps us date exactly where this bone block came from in the cliffs. It was just one of those moments where I happened to be exactly in the right place at the right time. I just walked the right path along the slabs and spotted this very lucky find. It was definitely a good day to go out fossil hunting. Hopefully you've all enjoyed today's video. I'll see you all on the next one.